What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about gradients and not any one specifically. I wanna show you in this video the importance of understanding how numbers relate to each other. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about gradients in this video. Before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this content, um, hey, check out the video description below. There's a link to this site right here that will bring up the Respiratory Coach Academy and all the resources I have to help support your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. Go check it out. The TMC Bootcamp, the CSC Bootcamp, the Formulas Course, Pharmacology, and ABG course, as, long as, as, as well as the uh, free resources course that is completely free for you. So go check that out by the time you end this video. Um, so let's jump into this. My whole point of this video is as I continue to teach uh, respiratory therapy students uh, all across this country, what I find is, is that uh, there's, there's a theme that keeps coming up and up and up. And that theme is, is that when you understand the relationship between normal values and abnormal values, then things start to make sense. And the, the, the questions as you're, you're taking your exams and even as you're taking care of your patients, the findings you will come across, it's real simple when you realize the relationship. So here's what I want to talk about. Remember, the title of this video is Gradients. So when we talk about a gradient, we talk about the difference between two values. So, so check this out. I want to show you something because in respiratory therapy, when numbers get further apart, it's typically telling you something. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This first one we're going to talk about is the P big A alveolar oxygen versus the arterial oxygen. This is the amount of, of, of oxygen that gets from within the alveoli into arterial blood. Now, when we look at this normally, we know that PaO2, big AO2, is usually about 100, and the arterial blood is normally around 80 to 90 up to 100. So we know that this gradient is usually somewhere in a small number, 5, 10, 15, 20. That's where it usually is. But look what happens down here. Look what happens when we give somebody a whole lot of oxygen and we take their P big AO2 up to 280 and their arterial PaO2 stays at 80. Look at our gradient now. Now it's 200. Guess what that means? If there's a big difference between the amount of oxygen that is inside of the alveolar units and the amount that's actually getting into our arterial blood, that means you've got some type of shunt process going on. Why is the oxygen going into the alveoli but not getting into the arterial blood? It tells us something, right? Let's take a look at another one here. I'm just going to give you the, the, the surface level of all of these. I'll follow this up with, with, with specific videos regarding all of these gradients. But for right now, just wanted you to see what I'm talking about when I talk about gradients. So when we talk about arterial CO2 minus entitled CO2, what we see here is that these are typically very close together, such as this. Arterial CO2 is usually about 40. That's normal. And then entitled CO2 is somewhere in the range of, of 1 to 5 below that. And we see that right here. Our gradient is 5. This means that, that everything is normal. But look what happens down here. Our arterial CO2 is now 50. Our entitled is 20. And the gradient, the difference between them is now 30. That's, this is telling me, I'm thinking dead space right here. I'm thinking, why do we have a situation where a ventilation is in excess of perfusion? Is it some type of, of, is it a pulmonary embolism? Or do we have a sudden drop in blood pressure? What's going on? But we have something going on here that tells me dead space. And I see that because of that big gradient. So that's oxygen and ventilation. But you know what? There's even more than that. Let's look at another one here. When we talk about the difference between PIP and plateau, when you get into mechanical ventilation, you start learning about all these different pressures that we monitor. Well, if you look at this first one, our PIP is 25 and our plateau is 20. That gives us a difference of five. And I like this number. I'm like, okay, you know what this tells me? 
There's no airway resistance because what I do know is that when PIP increases but plateau stays normal and our gradient increases, we now see we have 15. I'm going, why do we have a big difference here? Oh, that's right. This in this circumstance is telling me we have an airway resistance problem. And I have to now figure it out as the respiratory therapist. And that's the most important thing is why does all this matter? Because you're the subject matter expert. You're the, you're the cardiopulmonary specialist that went to school to be a respiratory therapist focused on how the lungs function. So when you see these large gradients, you can use them to, to, to know what's going on, to tell you more about what you need to do for your patient so we can treat them appropriately and impact their outcomes in a positive manner. That's why it's important. And that's why you need to know this stuff. So uh, let's look at another one here. Plateau minus peak. Now we know this is what we call driving pressure. And we know that driving pressure has a, um, a significant correlation with mortality. Driving pressure less than 15, we like that. Driving pressure greater than 15, higher risk for mortality in our ARDS population. Now, let's check this out. we got a plateau here of 20 and a peep of 10. That gives us a gradient of 10. Remember, 15 is our number. You have to know the normals, right? I mean, they're not, you got to know the baseline normals, but then you can see the difference. When we look down here, we see plateau is 35 and peep is 10. Our gradient is 25. Our gradient is now increased, which we now know is higher risk for mortality. Again, think back to the previous ones we've talked about. Anytime the gradient between two values increases, it's telling us something. And we then have to know how to treat it. So let's look at this one, cuff leak. Now, this is titled cuff leak because this is something we actually measure. But this actually could just be titled leak. Because what we know during mechanical ventilation is when we put in a volume, that volume should come back out. So in other words, if we put in 500, we should get back really, 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 really close to 500 on the exhalation. So this is inspiration. We put in 500. Expiration, we got back 490. What does that tell you? Oh, what we put in just about all of it came back because the gradient is only 10 mLs, which is lost in the circuit, which is fine. But when we look down here, we put in 500 tidal volume, inspiratory tidal volume, 500. Expiratory tidal volume is 100. What's the gradient? What's the difference between the two? 400 milliliters. Big difference. What does that tell me? There's a leak present. Now, if I'm doing a cuff leak test, then I might like that number. But if I'm not doing a cuff leak test and I'm putting in 500 and I'm getting back 100, then I need to examine the, the circuitry for a potential leak because we're losing volume from what we put in to what we get back. A big number, big gradient. It tells me something. Got one more for you here. When we talk about reversibility, when you start learning about pulmonary function testing, what we know is, is that we do a test and we get a pre-value and then we say, okay, well now we need to do a post-value. And in between the two, we give a bronchodilator. And what we want to see is, is do these numbers change? Well, here we go. Pre-FBC, force vital capacity is four liters. Post is 4.1. So the difference here is 0.1 liters. 0.1. I mean, we agree that these are essentially the same, 4.0 and 4.1. Pre versus post, there was no change. But look down here. Pre was 4 liters. Post was 5 liters. We got a change of a whole liter here. And these numbers look small, right? But when you think about this, this is 100 milliliters this is a thousand milliliters you see the difference it's a big difference this patient the bronchodilator improved 
their force vital capacity by a whole liter. And we know the formula to go ahead and finish that out to get a percentage of, of improvement or reversibility. But my point is, big number tells me something. Big number tells me something. And I can go back through every single one of them. You, 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 you give me some data, and anytime I see big differences between numbers and data that should relatively be close together, I know that it's telling me something, and I know what the problem is. Because that's what everything we do is, is gradients and ratios. And the more I teach this, the more I figure that out. So that's gradients. I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here on YouTube. Hey, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it if you help grow the channel and get the word out around respiratory therapy education. On Instagram, on TikTok at Respiratory Coach, and on LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. And remember, at the end of every single day, average is easy. Don't be it.